you guys consider a fire in your life? Today, first day of NIL, what kind of impact do you expect that to have on student athletes, especially here for your team? Well, we continue to educate our guys, uh, making sure that they go through the proper channels. Uh, like everything, we want to create the best student athlete experience for the young men in our program that we can. So that's an awareness of what the rules are, how they can uh, maximize uh, their abilities within the realm of the rules, and then supporting them through that process. So whether it's NIL or anything that we do here, we have a, a very similar process, and uh, we're going to continue to handle things in such a manner. Anybody have a deal today that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, from a process standpoint, our guys, you know, they need to submit something that comes to their attention in writing, and then it's evaluated by our administration, and we go from there. We want to make sure we protect their eligibility as well as uh, maximize their their potential income. How was uh, Blake uh, looking? Uh, getting over his illness and back in full swing of things, or yeah, Blake's been right yeah, Blake's been healthy. Uh, he's been a huge spark for us. Uh, he, he gives us somebody that has that mismatch ability. He's got a high level of intensity, uh, makes shots. Rebounds, gets to the foul line, so been very encouraged what we've seen from Blake up to this point. What's it been like just getting to know these guys since you took the job and starting to see how some of them mesh and some of them you put together, not just as pieces, quote unquote, but you know? Yeah, we've got tremendous young men in our locker room and in our program, and that's something that when we started recruiting, we really wanted great people, uh, guys who were uh, goal driven, uh, work oriented, competitive. Uh, we've seen that thus far in our workouts and in our practices. So uh, proud of them for that, fortunate to be their coach, excited to keep working with them because I know that mindset can accomplish a lot. And we have, uh, we have big goals that we want to, things we want to do. So uh, I think it's a great building block. The priority, what does practice look like? What have you guys been doing? We've been doing everything at this point as a team. We're allowed four hours a week to, to get workouts in. So. We want to make that investment in each other, so we're out there putting in some of our team offense and defensive concepts. But more than that, it's just them seeing each other make the work, uh, the, work the investment, uh, being on a similar schedule, having that same degree of accountability uh, and work ethic together. So uh, we've seen progress through that. We'll continue those workouts. Uh, whether we change it or not moving forward, I'm not sure. But right now, we've been in the four one-hour workouts per week as a team. As, yeah, as a coach, I think you have to really know your team and what's best for that group because we're all coming together, whether it's the, the six returning players or the seven guys coming in new. It's important that we all have the same terminology, that we all get to know each other better. So in the future, it's hard to say exactly what we'll do, but I'm confident what's best for this group is to keep them all together, working together, learning each other's game, and then making that investment uh, in one another at, at, you know, on the same timeline. Just overall, you're getting this team where you want it to be. When you have such an injection of talent coming from all over, how do you envision that working? Well, number one, we're going to hang our hat on defensive intensity, effort. Um, we're going to be a team that uh, we try to keep the ball out of the paint. We take charges. We get deflections. And we utilize our defense as a way to create our offense. So we, we believe we've got guys that have a lot of different offensive talents, and we can certainly play to their strengths. But overall, you're going to see a commitment to the defensive end of the floor to rebound in the basketball going in transition. What are you seeing from Tyrese? Tyrese is a, a, a highly competitive winner. He comes every day with a look in his eye that he wants to get better. He wants to be told the truth when he's being coached. He doesn't want it sugar-coated. Uh, he really cares about improving. Up to this point, he's been somebody that he's a dynamic playmaker. Uh, his spirit infects our team. He's a tremendous on-ball defender. He's still a freshman, and we've got a lot to work on, but really pleased with the, the early start that, that he's gotten off to here for our program. How big do you think George Condit's experience internationally will do? For, what, what do you think that will do for him? Well, it's, it's going to help him grow as a player in so many ways. I had a conversation with him yesterday afternoon, and we talked about what is going on so far, what he's learned, how he's grown. Seeing the physicality of basketball at that level is important because he's talking about how guys are grabbing and holding, and you've just got to play through it, that they're not fouls, things you think are fouls. 
being coached uh, by different coaches, those experiences uh, are impactful in terms of learning and growing and just an overall understanding. And then he's playing against a tremendous level of competition. So been pleased to see uh, his finishing. I mean, he's shooting 66% from the floor, getting about six rebounds, doing a great job protecting the rim. A lot of those same things that we need for our team to be successful. So really happy with what we've seen. And, and I know that he went there in great shape. Uh, he got himself in great shape, which has allowed him to have some success. Is Xavier back at full strength? I noticed the same from him. Yeah, Xavier's, uh, he's in the workouts. Uh, what I'd say is such a unique player, you know, at his size, with his versatility and skill set. When we can get X to give maximum effort on the defensive side, he can give us that additional rim protection, shot blocking. Uh, he can get rebounds that maybe some others can't get. So uh, we're excited about his continued, you know, as he continues to grow and develop in that way, and we're going to continue to hold him to a high level of accountability on the defensive end of the floor. Where does Gabe fit into this equation as an experienced guy that can do so many different things, but also can probably give you that leadership quality that, that you need? Gabe's somebody who knows exactly how the game's supposed to go. Uh, starting 86 Big Ten games and uh, having the experiences he's had. He's played in hostile environments on the road. He's been a part of some big wins. So what we find with Gabe is he's always in the right spot. He knows what the right play is. He makes the extra pass. He knocks down open shots. He's somebody that's a very, very complete defensive player, could be one of the better defensive guards in our league. So uh, his leadership on a daily basis as he continues to get momentum and his confidence grows, even in our program, we look for more and more of that leadership from him. You know, it was, again, don't quote me on exact date. I, I think we're looking at like the second week of June is when he was cleared for, for some contact activities. And, uh, you know, he had stayed and done some additional work with our training staff in between. But I believe it was that second week of June he was cleared to come in and, and, and do full workouts. Did he? Shooting numbers at Minnesota where I mean, he shot really well as a freshman and you know, kind of dipped off by the time he was a junior. What does it take to unlock that and get him back to where he was shooting earlier in his career? Well, Gabe's an elite shooter, and he's been an elite shot maker his whole career. I think we coach him as a basketball player, not as a catch-and-shoot player, because I know that he can make plays off the dribble. He can make others better as well. To me, that's my responsibility. Are we getting him the right shots? Is he getting the confidence that he needs from the coaching staff? And I know that if he has those two things in place, getting the right shots and confidence from us, he'll knock down shots at a high level. And uh, we've, I mean, he's got really deep range and he's made big shots and clutch moments. So uh, excited to see his confidence continue to grow and I'll take the ownership in that process. How's it been for you readjusting to life back in Ames and being back in these facilities, getting used to these other guys? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been surreal. Obviously, this is a special place for my family and I. Uh, if we could pick anywhere on the planet to raise our family, be in Central Iowa, and as much as I take a lot of pride in being the leader of this program, being a husband and father is at the top of that priority list. Um, but I have so much pride in Iowa State, the success we want this program to have. Um, my wife has so much pride in Iowa State. This is who we are. So feels great to be home. feels great to be back where we belong. And, excited to uh, to get to the court and play some games and show that pride in front of 14-5 at Hilton Coliseum. We're talking about Blake and Jazz, I think. What's that, that three, four position like? You got a lot of range of guys, maybe that can fill those spots. What, how do you envision that competition or the line that you're doing? Yeah, we do. And there's there's been a lot of competition and, and with experienced guys, which is good as well, because we have some guys that have done it at other places and some that have done it here. Um, we're going to start by building our team on the defensive end of the floor. And so the, the guys that we feel like give us the best chance to get a stop will likely f find themselves on the court more. There's been a lot of guys, to your point, that are in that range of the bigger wing, smaller forward, versatile um, type of player. And then there's still times you can, you, know, you can play a little bit more skilled. I hesitate to say small ball because I don't think anyone's trying to play smaller players. You're trying to play the more skilled players who can dribble, pass, and shoot. And so. We'll find times where we can play bigger. We'll find times that we can play more of a four guard lineup. Um, you know, we're, we're two and a half weeks into our process and have another five months before we play a game. So how do those competitions go? There's still a lot that has to play out. For you personally, how do you feel like these guys are just responding to you as their coach? And what is it about your coaching style, your development style, how you treat these guys as players that you want them to hopefully gravitate to? 
the, their development as young men and as students and athletes is, is at the forefront of everything we do. The player development uh, piece is number one. So our coaching staff, it's that investment every single day that we make in them to be there to mentor them, to be a listener, to give them advice, to teach them, to help them learn, to tell them stories about how George Niang did it or how Monte Morris did it or how some of these legends that have played here, how they went about work and why that enacted winning. And so we continue to share that message. So. More than anything, it's our investment in them every single day that we're trying to um, put at the forefront of everything we do. And their effort's been great. Uh, their attention has been uh, great to, to detail. Um, but we're going to coach them fair and honest. Uh, we're going to hold them accountable when they need to be accountable. We're going to give them a hug when they need a hug. And we're going to tell them it's not good enough and challenge them when it needs to be better. Yeah, we hope so. We're trying to continue to bring those guys back. I know for a few of them, they have camps. Uh, I spoke to Matt Thomas about a camp he has, or George Niang being back for golf outings, and then with the reunion as well. So we're trying to do the best that we can to continue to embrace those guys and those success stories. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. We've had some Cyclone trivia games and things to really ingratiate our current team with those guys and how they did it. But I take a lot of pride in when we – you know, we came to this program uh, as an assistant coach, where we went, how that looked, the guys that helped generate winning, the Melvin Edgems, the Scott Christoffersons, the Georges, the Montes, the Mats, the Nazes, all those guys. And we tell that story and say, hey, look, this is there for you. This is how these guys did it. If you want the success they had, you need to work how they worked. What was it like to see him duel make the NBA Finals outside? It's pretty cool. Um, you know, I know he's coming back from that injury. Um, you know, they put him in last night and he's guarding Paul George, which what a fun job that is on the elbows, but he was really competitive, uh, did a great job. I really noticed he was sprinting the floor both ends, had wide hands, and only got six minutes, but he's, he's given them another weapon, a versatile wing that they can get out there and excited to see what he can do in the finals. Thank you.